Ah, welcome to the second video uh, of me showing you uh, what's new in, well, the changes, let's say, in version 4 of Simplify 3D. To sort of see a bit of a background and the introduction to this little series I'm doing, uh, watch the first video, which I will link in the description. But in this one, we're going to be talking about a new feature called Seamless Process Transition. Uh, the idea being that... Uh, uh, the idea of this new feature being to get rid of any artefacts where the split in processes happen. I.e. if you uh, use two different processes or more for one print, um, historically, kind of depending on what was uh, being changed in those processes. But let's use the example that Simplify 3D have put on their own website. If you uh, have a one process where the layer height is 0.1 mil with a 10% infill, and then the second process doing the second half of the print, let's say uh, using a 0.15 mil layer height and a 20 mil, 20 mil, 20% infill, um, you would get an artifact or a scar around where that uh, where the processes change or the transition area. Uh, yeah, we'll go into the reasons why that's the case when uh, we go up and have a look at it in the old software. Uh, but uh, that's the idea of the new process is to get rid of that. So once uh, we've done the old uh, look in the software and the previews and exactly what it's doing on the sort of mechanics of it, I'll do some test prints and uh, we'll see what the real world life uh, outcome of this is. But first, to the desktop. So here we are in Simplify 3D. In fact, we're in two versions of Simplify 3D at the same time. On the left, we've got uh, version 4 and on the right, we have version 3. What we're seeing here is the tool head at a position after um, the transition has been made to the 20% uh, infill with 0.15 layer height and as you can see they are now identical. But if we move down to where version 3 has just started on the second process i.e. with the 20% infill and the uh, different layer height you can see that the layer underneath is a solid layer. And indeed there are three solid layers I'm assuming and I haven't tested this but I'm assuming it's because my print settings uh, has three solid bottom layers. So if we now move down uh, right into the first process before any transition, you can see that uh, both sides are absolutely identical. And if we step up just in the version 4 on the left hand side, line by line, you can see it just goes from the 10% uh, infill and obviously the layer height into 20% infill. Um, and it just sticks one on top of the other. If we do the same in version 3 on the right hand side, you can see where it starts doing the solid layers. And then once the version 3 side has got onto the sort of first of its new 20% uh, infill layers, then they basically both return to being identical. So that's the uh, software side of it and the simulation in Simplify 3D. Um, let's see how this actually translates into some real prints. And here, the results. I've got uh, three 20 millimeter cubes that I've printed out. Um, I printed out 20 mil because 12, 10 mil, let's say, I'm not sure if it would really get up to speed with acceleration and jerk and all that kind of stuff. Whereas with 20 mil, I think uh, we probably got full speed sweeps on each layer. So basically my first cube here was done as the control in Simplify 3D version three. It is printed entirely at 0.1 millimeter layer height with 10% infill. Um, so that, yeah, this would basically provide a control as there's no uh, sort of change in process, no transition. So really this is should be the clean one. And we can compare the rest to it. So then I printed out uh, the same cube and still in version three using uh, the, you know, the method that you have to use in version 3 to combine two different processes or two sets of print settings into one. Um, I've used this exactly uh, using the settings that uh, Simplify 3D have on their website, which is uh, for the first half up to 10 mil in this 20 mil cube. It has a 0.1 millimeter layer height 
and a 10% infill. It then swaps at 10 mils and the remaining 10 mil is uh, at 0.15 millimeter layer height with a 20% uh, infill. Now I have to say that um, the differences between this and the control are so little um, it is almost impossible to photograph. It's one of those weird situations where you can just about see it in real life but it doesn't really matter how close you get with the uh, photography and this is pretty close as you can see uh, for the scale that's one mil there um, we're pretty close up you can see the individual layers and you can also see lots of dust but uh, there you go what I can say is yes you can see a, a sort of transition section where the three solid layers are printed um, it comes out more of a change in finish than anything else uh, which you kind of get anyway between the different layer heights but this provides maybe a third finish rather than just having one sort of finish on the 0.1 mil layer height and a second one on the 0.15 mil layer height you've got a little third sort of surface finish sandwiched in the middle there where the solid layers are so yeah it is just about noticeable on the third print um, I have the exactly the same uh, print settings in version 4 of Simplify 3D. So this is where it's using their new seamless transition. And uh, yeah, I can say that it uh, it works 100%. Um, you can obviously still see if you hold it at the right angle in the right light, you can see the difference between a 0.1 mil layer height and a 0.15 mil layer height. But what you can't see is a sort of third surface finish in between them like you could in version 3 uh, where the solid layers are uh, mostly because there aren't any solid layers so I also printed one with in version 3 <laughs> with no perimeters just for the hell of it oh, I'm not going to bother showing you this because it's kind of utterly pointless really uh, <laughs> I was kind of interested to see if you could print something with no perimeters turns out in version 3 you can in version 4 you can't you know um, yeah, pointless really. Uh, so my conclusion is basically if you need, you know, the maximum amount of surface finish quality that you're going to possibly get, uh, then version 4 is an improvement. For me personally, that sort of transition area, uh, it doesn't really bother me. It's not like, um, certainly of these prints here at least, it's not like you get, um, you know, lumps or something um, it is literally just a change in the surface finish which you can only you can't feel it but you can just about see if you hold it in the right light so if that's important to you then yeah it, it's uh, it works put it that way it does definitely work so in the next video we're going to be covering uh, some of the new features in version 4 uh, around the sequential printing where you print multiple parts at the same time on the same bed and you print them one after another. So we'll have a look at that next.